All right, guys, welcome back. In this episode, we're going to learn some of the tools that we're going to be using in the future. And, you know, while we learn these tools, I want you to remember that every tool you learn in Photoshop, as soon as you understand where and when to use it and how to use it, it becomes part of your arsenal. An arsenal is basically a repository or a, or a collection of all the tools and techniques that you know. And the more you know, the faster and better things that you are able to create. Right, so let's get started. Um, let's head over to Photoshop. So I'm going to click on File, New. I'm going to create a document with all the basic settings: 1000, 1072 RGB. Create. Awesome. So let's start with with all the different tools that we have. Right. So first, I'm going to go create a new layer. I'm going to create a layer. Okay. And I'm going to go click on the Shape tool. We've already learned the Shape tool. This time I'm going to click on the, the rounded rectangle tool. Now, as you know, and I've told you this before, all of these tools have a few options and settings, right? And these are available on the top at the, on this bar here. So what we're going to do is we are just going to change a few of those things. So we're going to change the fill. We'll override that for now. Let's choose a different fill. Let's choose, I don't know, this purple looks nice. This bluish purple looks nice. Let's give it a small stroke. So this means no stroke. This dash just means no stroke. I'm going to choose maybe a green stroke. It's going to look ugly. But it's fine. One pixel. Now the units in Photoshop are all in pixels, right? Just like you have meters and inches, you have pixels, right? So one pixel is however many pixels you can see in your screen. If you hold up a magnifying glass to your screen, you will be able to see the individual pixels. And I'll show you what that looks like in a bit. So I'm going to choose one pixel. And you can choose between dots and dashes and, and straight lines. We're not going to do any of that. I'm just going to, you know, go ahead and create the shape. Okay, and I'm going to press enter. Now you probably can't see the uh, stroke, right? That was given here. So let me show you a new technique. And that technique is the ability to zoom in and zoom out. To zoom in, you press the control and plus buttons, right? The plus on your keyboard. So as you can see, I zoomed in. You can also zoom in by clicking here. And you know, we went to 200, let's go to 300, right? And as you can see, you're slowly able to see this, this, you know, border here. So I'm going to zoom in a little more. So you're able to see, and now Photoshop starts showing you the individual pixels. These are all individual pixels. And as you can see, you know, there's one row of pixels here at the bottom and on all sides. And if I zoom out, you can see on all the different sides, which kind of show you the stroke associated. So let's just, let's just set this back to 100. We'll go back to what it originally looks like. So we've learned a little bit about zooming now. So we've created the shape. And now what we're going to do with the shape is we're going to manipulate it a little bit, right? We're going to use some of these tools on it. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on the move tool, right? We've moved things before and we're just going to move things around, right? How awesome is that? So before we get into learning any of the tools, I just want to quickly show you how the shape tool works. And I want to show you some of the options, right? The options that we have here. Um, every tool has its own options. For now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to delete the shape layer, right? We're going to go back to this. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to import an actual image. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on file. I'm going to click on place embedded, right? And this is the way to actually get images into Photoshop. And I'm going to click on this, this image of this Harley. It's an open source image from Unsplash. And I just put it here and I'm going to press the enter button to place it. Right. So that's it. And, you know, click on the move tool. I can move this around and I'm going to show you, you know, our entire range of tools on this one image. And remember, these become part of your arsenal. So you already know the move tool. Now I'm going to show you the selection tool. So we are going to use the selection tool and I'm going to right click this. There are many different types of you know shapes you can choose. I'm going to choose the rectangular marquee tool. And with this, I can click and drag, right? I can click and drag however I want. I can click as much as I want. Um, you know, I can just keep clicking whatever I want, you know, moving the selection around doesn't really matter. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select, you know, just maybe the bike out of this, right? So I'm just going to select this. And if I want to add more to my selection, I click, you know, you know, in the tool options, I can choose something called add to selection. Now, whenever I select something, maybe I select, you know, this, it gets added to my selection instead of it making a new selection. Whereas, you know, if, if I was just on the default, which is new selection, 
you know, if I selected this, everything else disappears. So I'm going to click on add to selection and to unselect or deselect, you have to press control plus D. Control plus D deselects everything on a Mac. That's command plus D. It deselects everything. And it's a very handy thing to have in your arsenal. You don't want to keep, you know, undoing selections. You might want to just clear all your selections at some point. That's how you do it. So I'm just going to select this bike. Right. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy it and paste it into a new layer. So to copy, you have to press the control C button. And this is, this is exactly how you'd copy any file in windows, right? Control or command C and control or command V, right? And I've pasted it and you can't see that I've pasted it, but it's there because it's on a new layer. And as you can see, there are two different layers now, right? And this layer has a Harley. Let's move it around, right? So you can move it around and you can, as you can see, it's just the bike and a little bit of its surrounding. So now what you do is just for the sake of this episode, I'll show you a cool thing that you can do with layers, right? You can actually hide a layer by clicking on the eye icon next to it. So I'm just going to hide this, this, this previous Harley layer with all the extra surroundings. I'm going to go into this one, right? And as you can see, I can move this around. So we've learned the selection tool, right? You can select whatever you want and to deselect it's control or command plus D. Right. So I've deselected it. Then there's the lasso tool, right? The lasso tool allows you to make freehand selections. While this marquee tool allows you to make specific shape based selections, the lasso tool allows you to actually select how you want. So let's just, let's be a little more specific, right? We're not, we're gonna we'll just draw around the Harley. Let's see if we can make it, you know, nice. We don't have to be super accurate. You can just draw around it and pick out only what you want. All right, so let's just cut a little bit out. We're just getting a little more specific with our selections. Okay, we got this out. And again, command C, command V, right? And that pasted on your new layer. And I'm going to hide the previous layer again. And now I'm going to click on this layer and I'm going to move it around, right? Now, one thing that you guys might have a problem with, which, you know, I want to make you aware of is when you click this layer and you try to move things around, nothing will move around to move, to use any of these tools, you need to be on the layer where the tool is, right? So you need to, you need to have selected the layer in this small, you know, layer selection space. So I'm going to specifically click this layer and only then I can move it. I can't be in some other layer and expect to move this Harley, right? I need to be exactly in the layer. So I'm in the layer, I'm moving it around and you know, Similarly, there are many other types of selection. There's something called magic wand tool, which, you know, I would recommend you do not use, especially in the early days, even when you get, you know, most professionals don't use it either. If you click on it, you can select things based on their color. So if I want to select all the things here that are black, I can click on any black section and, you know, it'll select all the blacks or the grays around it. Right. And, you know, we'll uncheck something called contiguous, right. And I can just click on this. And as you can see, I select all the blacks in the image. It's not completely accurate, but you know, it kind of helps you when you want to select some, a lot of things that have the same color and to expand the range of colors that it selects from, you can change the tolerance from maybe, you know, 30 to 50. And now when I, when I press command D and deselect and I select it again, you get a lot more of the selection. You can't see it, but you're selecting a few more things. Now I'm going to, you know, deselect this again. As you can see, everything that we've used so far is either been about moving or selection. And that's fine. We learn a lot more about selection, but you know, let's, let's move on. So the crop tool, you know, this is fairly obvious. It allows you to crop. I'm not going to go through this. I'm not going to go through the frame tool. It's not very important. You will not be using it uh, often. The next thing that I want to show you is the eyedropper tool. The eyedropper tool specifically allows you to pick out one color and then it makes it your foreground color. Remember the foreground color we have here? The eyedropper basically allows you to pick some color so we can make it part of our foreground. So if I click this, let's take this orange here. And as in a, as you can see, sure enough, this became orange. If I select this, then it became gray. If I select maybe, I don't know, this, then it'll become, you know, brown. So this allows you to pick out colors from the scene so that you're able to create images or shapes or anything that, you know, has the same color as you already have in your scene. So the next thing, we're not going to go through things like spot healing, but we will look at the brush. How do you actually use the brush? So the brush is very simple. I clicked on the brush tool 
And what I'm going to do is instead of drawing on this Harley layer, right? Once you start brushing or doing any of these things, it becomes destructive. Destructive means it actually, you know, once I draw something here, if I draw something here, then now this is part of the Harley layer. I can't get the Harley back, right? I can't get the information, the color information that was below. So I'm going to undo and to undo in Photoshop, use control Z. Now in earlier versions of Photoshop, this was control Alt Z. Uh, in the newer versions, anything above 2018, 2019, control Z works best, right? So control Z, you know, I undid what I did. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on layer, new layer. We're going to create a new layer, right? And here I'm going to use the brush tool and I'm going to draw on the Harley. This time it's non-destructive because it's on a new layer and it's not affecting the Harley layer. So if I go to the move tool, I can actually move this, this garbage that I've created around, right? Without affecting the pixels below aren't affected. And that's one of the cool parts about doing this, right? So I've used the brush tool and I'm going to move it away from the Harley. Let's not you know, make it look bad. And with the brush tool, you know, there's, if you right click, you can also see things like the pencil tool. We're not going to use any of it. We're just going to look, stay with the brush tool. Um, and you know, a lot of these other tools, we're going to revisit a little later, but let's go to the eraser tool, right? When you click on the eraser tool, this is fairly obvious. You found this in Microsoft paint. You know how an eraser works. You can just cut. Right? It's, it's basically a way to erase, but you know, you can play with some of the options here. You can change it. You can change its opacity. You can change its flow. You can add some smoothening. And now when you erase, as you can see, it's not a very, you know, perfect erase. You can actually erase with a little bit of transparency and a little bit of, you know, jitter. So it looks like it's been slowly erased or, or erased with a lighter touch with a feather touch. Right? So that's about the eraser. We've already looked at the paint bucket tool and I'm going to create a new layer, layer, new layer. Okay. And we're going to use the eyedropper tool and one shortcut for the eyedropper tool, which you guys need to know is the alt key. If you just hold down the alt key, I'm just going to show you. It turns into the eyedropper, right? And I'm going to pick out a color. Maybe I'm going to pick out silver, right? And I'm going to click on the paint bucket tool. I'm going to create a new layer. I think I already did that and I'm going to paste this in. And as you can see, it fills the entire area and this we've already used. We know how the paint bucket tool works, but you can also play with the paint bucket tool, right? If you right click it, you will get the gradient tool and the gradient tool is awesome because it creates a gradient between the foreground color and the background color. So I'm just going to draw a small little gradient. If you hold the shift key, you can be straight about your gradient, right? So that's it. You just generated a gradient on a new layer. And obviously you can play with the gradient. Here are the tool options. Maybe I want a circular gradient. Um, so I'm going to select this. That's it. That's a gradient, right? So um, we're going to go through the rest of the tools too soon. We've already used the shape tool. Uh, we look at the pen tool. We look at, you know, creating some text. So let's do that. Let's click on the text tool. Let's change the color, our foreground color to white and let's type something. And one of the interesting things about typing something is whenever you create a new shape or you type something, if you're not already on a new layer, it creates a new layer for you. And the advantage with that is so that you don't type over some image you already have. So I'm just going to type something. I'm going to say, hi, my name is Varun, right? And I'm going to just click on the move tool to make the type. So whenever you want to end the type, just press the move tool, right? And that kind of ends it. It makes, it allows you to move it around. And now, I'm going to show you the final culmination of this video, which is the transform tool, right? Your ability to transform, how to transform things in Photoshop, how to make things bigger, smaller, rotate it. How do you do all that? And the solution is to press the control plus T buttons. That's control plus T, right? And you'll see these markers around what you just created. And now you can move things around. You can make this bigger, right? You can make this much bigger. You can click on the center and drag it around. You can, you know, make this bigger. And now if you want to pull only this down, if you want to change the proportions, you hold the shift button. So you can actually do this, right? By default, the transform tool, at least in newer versions of Photoshop doesn't allow you to stretch too far, but isn't this cool, right? And if you want to rotate things, instead of pressing one of these things, one of these corners or one of these sides, you can just go slightly outside and you have the rotate tool. So now you can rotate, 
right? So to apply a transform, right? Once you once you're done, you know you've moved it around. You want it to be in the perfect place. You want to apply it. You press the Enter key, right? Just to place an image, to place a shape, to finish a transform, you press the Enter key. So I press the Enter key. My name is Varun. We've learned the transformations. We've learned all this cool stuff. We've learned how to use the tools. You have some tools in your arsenal. In the next video, we're going to get a little, we're going to play a little more with these tools. So catch you on the next video. Bye-bye.